I'm going to show you folks something kind of fun here on a scroll saw. This is just a little piece of scrap wood. It's uh, oh, probably five, five sixteenths thick, something like that. Um, and it's just a, it's actually an old sample. Um, but I want to show you how you can freehand, and I'll show you how to, uh, to do this, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. I first learned how to do this when I was doing demos. And you have a lot of long days with nothing going on. And uh, this was the time when the very first Batman movie was coming out. So I started cutting out little bats. And uh, they were pretty awful, but kids liked them, so I'd give them away in the pairs and things. And uh, then I decided to try another animal, and I thought, maybe a rabbit. And it occurred to me that the Trix rabbit was going to be easy because it had uh, such a goofy shape, you could hardly go wrong. So I started cutting out rabbits. And this is really a variation of the rabbit cut that I'm doing here. The first cut that I'm making, I'm cutting out it's really just kind of a modified triangle, and you'll see why that is. That's a scrap piece there. And the thing on a scroll saw, you want to make sure you've got a nice fine blade with a tight tension on it. And uh, this is the Shopsmith scroll saw, but I suspect you can do this on any, any good quality scroll saw. The main thing is to be able to make sharp turns without snapping the blade. Uh, I'm using my fingers to hold down the wood uh, while I am. Uh, while I'm cutting here, there's also a hold down foot that helps keep that from chattering. And this is something really fun to try. I, I don't have any lines on the wood at all. You might just give this a shot. You may surprise yourself. Try making something. Sometimes you can just, oh, make some cuts and see what it looks like. And from there you can modify it into something else. And then as you go along, uh, you'll get more creative with it. So this is something that I like to cut out. I haven't done this in a while, but we'll see what happens here. And I could tell you right now what it's going to be, but that would spoil the surprise, I think. So uh, just bear with me for a second. We're going to make a turn here, and turn here. And you should be able to rotate back uh, almost right inside the line with a good scroll saw like this. If you've got uh, kids in your life, kids or grandkids or neighborhood kids, and you want to get them interested in, in woodworking, uh, you can make a couple little quick projects like this, and it usually fascinates them. And uh, Scroll saw is a great tool to start a kid on because it's one of the safest tools there is. Uh, I wouldn't start a six-year-old on it, but if the youngster has some uh, ability and uh, can follow directions, uh, it's a great tool. Put a little pair of safety glasses on them and get a piece of wood and let them make a cut. All right, uh, I'm almost done with this. I just have a couple other quick little turns here. And when I get very, very thin like this is where I have to go slow. If I just vary by a tiny bit, even a 32nd of an inch, uh, I'm going to break it. Not a big deal. It's just a piece of scrap wood and something fun to do. But, <laughs> but you might surprise yourself uh, with what you can't make. Uh, now, I have seen true scroll saw artists that can do some things that I've never seen anybody do like that. But uh, if you can make something that pleases a kid and you've had fun doing it, why not? Now what I've done here is made a little cat, and the cat has caught the mouse, as you can see. And it's just fun. Uh, I usually like my uh, scroll saw work to tell a story of some kind, so I'm going to set that one down and make another one. And this one is going to be very similar, except uh, it has a little bit uh, different part of the story. Actually, this is the earlier part of the story, so we're going to make the basic triangle from the underneath side of the cat here. You come up, you come down where his belly is, spin around for his, his haunches, thick part of his leg, and then his foot. And come right out there. It's going to be the beginning. And now I come up for his tail. His backside. I'm cutting close to the other one just to make sure I can get as much use out of this wood as possible. We get to the top, we'll spin it around, that's his tail. This guy's going to have a little bit different posture to him. He's, he's uh, going to be leaning forward a little bit more, I think. So we make the, the line just slightly different. Come up for his ear. Now here's another place where the ability to make a sharp turn is real important. And we come down. And this guy, we're just going to finish his face off now. Looking back on this when I'm done, uh, I realize I should have made his head a little bit better defined, but I promise you no youngster's going to mind it. 
Now we're going to come down. This is the front part of our cat's leg. This time, instead of having it catch the mouse, we're going to show it just before that. We're going to show the mouse having just been discovered by the cat. They've just sort of met each other here. Well, this is about uh, two minutes before the first one. And these are fun. You can make a whole series of these and tell any kind of story that you want to. Just let your imagination. And I build a lot of furniture. I build a lot of cabinets. But this is something that's just a relaxing way to just play a little bit. It still gets me down in my shop and lets me sell the saw, uh, smell the sawdust. Have a little bit of fun. Use up some scrap wood. By the way, if you don't have any scraps like this, the best thing I've found is just uh, take your bandsaw and slice up some pieces, make them a quarter inch thick or so. Anywhere from a quarter to half inch works fine. Um, and you can uh, do all kinds of things with this. You can get very, very fancy with it. Uh, but just for this demonstration, I just wanted to show you how to have a little bit of fun here. All right, almost done. And again, this is the part that you have to be pretty careful with. Uh, we're into the mouse's tail here. We don't want it to snap off, so just kind of be careful. Follow it down and come out the line. Let's pull that out of there, and you'll see our our cat and our mouse just just having met right there. <laughs> Is that fun? All right. Now I'm going to show you one other cutout here, and this one is. Uh, and this one I'm just going to show you the final cut. It's cut out of that same scrap piece of wood. But this one's a story of the coyote, and he's out howling for his sweetheart. And you're going to see uh, her off in the distance. She's, she's answering with her howl as well. But what I want you to see is the basic shape for the coyote is the same as the shape for the cat. You just cut out for his leg, uh, or his belly underneath, and you go for his tail. But, now, I've made his, uh, his head swing back quite a bit because he's howling. Put a cactus there in the middle of him, and off to the right you can see in the distance that's the lady coyote howling back. So again, uh, no pretense of great artwork, just fun, something to entertain yourself and the youngsters, and uh, give it a try sometime. I think you might enjoy it. Thanks for watching.